Happy, happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back to Tyrrell Time with me, Judy Finnegan. Uh, you find us on a bit of a high. Um, we go into round three of the 2000 season, having had the team saved on a three-season uh, Red Bull deal uh, for 19 million a season, which we're going to do our best to lock in. Um, beyond that, um, got some reassignment stuff to do here. Um, the, the consensus... Uh, between comments and one or two uh, messages I got was that you actually like the uh, <clears throat> the Japanese themed uh, playthrough, you know, the Honda engines and the idea of working within that limitation. So that's what we're going to keep doing. Um, in terms of other deals, uh, need to get started on fuels, really. Uh, but I'm not sure who to go for. I'm really not. Mm. I don't think we'll get a works deal with Shell, but maybe we'll get one with Mobile. If we ask super nicely. Uh, I'm going to take some of the guys off the, this Castrol deal. Reason being that actually the Magneti Morelli deal is worth more money um, overall, if I recall correctly. Let me take a cheeky look and see. Yes, yes it is. It's worth 2.4 million. Um, Beyond that, we are actually cash flow positive for the first time, which is really good. And that really comes down to clinching the uh, the Zepta title sponsorship deal at the last second um, last season. The um, the benefit of the Red Bull deal is, is even bigger as well, because um, the loan we took out comes due at the end of 2002, I want to say possibly 2003, and it would come out as a lump sum. You don't actually pay, um, you don't actually pay back month over month. It, it falls as a lump sum, which is a really stupid way of, of dealing with it, but that's, that's the way it is. In other news, um, I apologize that there's not been a Sauber episode this weekend, been crazy busy again, but we'll pick up the Sauber playthrough early this week sometime, and we'll be back on a regular schedule now. Uh, the tour playthrough looks like it's carrying on because we've survived, so I guess it all depends what happens over on the, over on the Sauber playthrough. Um, regarding the uh, the feedback I got from everybody, um, there will be an episode this week where we'll uh, talk about that a little bit, and um, I will get back to you all on comments about what's going on uh, on Wednesday's episode, so do bear with me on that. Let's take a look at what's going on everywhere. We have some commercial staff we can pick up. That's good news indeed. It's all about the monies. Um, we don't have a designer in place, but we're after Oso Goto, who might, if we're lucky, take a one season deal. No, now it's too short. Fussy. That's his problem. Fussy. Hope no one signs in before us, because, you know, being Japanese, that helps us out. And, yeah, everyone else, all departmental heads are signed except for him. Drivers we've got for another season. Celso Moriera has escaped us. He's He's gone. So we will be picking up on a one-season deal. Mr. Tanaka, keeping with the Japanese flavour. Uh, he will be on a one season contract um, and we'll actually start him now, I think, um, because there's a bug in the game where if I start him next year, the contract will roll over and it will be he'll be on like a three season deal or something. And we might actually want to get him into a race seat. Um, just for the fun of it, depending on how the playthrough goes. So we'll get him started now. Uh, it's already it's done it again. He's he signed that role until 2003. I think we can move him along. Um, I'm pretty sure we can. So we'll figure it out as we go. Progress on next year's car is better than last year. Still not as fast as we would like, but 
Um, initially, there was some concern that we were not going to be able to build new cars for next year. I'm less concerned about that now, given how cash flow positive we've been over the flyaway races. And um, we do need a new car because our 2000 car is awful. It's really bad. The cost of manufacture for spare parts is also prohibitively high. So we're going to be a lot more conservative um, over how many we use and in what cases we use them. The car, even in uh, perfect condition, is awful. And that means I don't feel there's any incentive really to um, constantly keep it in maximum condition. All right, let's see what we can do here. I'll just take as much wear off as I can, I think, and leave the damage. The damage has a bigger effect, of course, but um, but who cares? We're going to be the last no matter what we do. Still not doing any hospitality. We could afford to do it now, but there's no incentive, really. And whatever happens now, um, we just have to worry about taking deals um, for the, the, the engine supply, the fuel supply, and the tire supply. Everything else is gravy um, because we've already more than doubled, more than doubled um, our money year over year. So we're going to be a lot wealthier next year. And it certainly puts to bed any fears of the team folding in the near term. Uh, let's get these guys uh, back out on track. We've received no new tyres. Kel surprise. I hope you've all had a wonderful weekend, by the way, enjoying uh, the Monaco, not the Monaco Grand Prix. What am I talking about? The, the Grand Prix at Monza, Monza, Monaco. They both begin M-O-N. It's fine. It's Sunday. Let me off. Um, I wondered, actually, if any of you saw the uh, the big F3 crash, um, which was scary as all balls. Um, fortunately, no one was injured, but that was a miracle. Uh, it makes me wonder. I mean, I I watched the uh, the actual Grand Prix on replay because F1's um, live streaming service is so garbage. So the race is actually just finished as I'm recording this. Um, so I don't know what's happened, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everyone finished okay because the way things have been going in F1 recently, it's scary times indeed. Uh, good showing from Tora Takagi there on the hard compound tyre. He puts himself in P19 ahead of both Prosts of Schumacher and Frentzen. Uh, Nakano, though, down at the bottom, um, about a tenth and change off the back of Frentzen. Meanwhile, uh, the midfield is very Sauber Minardi flavour, which is odd. Minardi being on the, so many work steals, uh, and truly is a respectable driver, but they don't seem to be putting the package together just yet. Meanwhile, uh, Mika Hakkinen takes your pole position for Williams on a 125.835. Uh, Giancarlo Fisichella second for Jordan. And um, Mika Salo lines up third for Arrows, continuing a very strong season for them. Jordan seemed to be the ones to beat, though, um, in terms of consistent good performance. Olivier Panis lining up fourth. Uh, although both Williams are in the top six, so encouraging. Uh, a drop of two degrees uh, between quality and race. Cloudy with strong winds. Uh, we will, of course, do the classic one-stop with Takagi. Uh, he might actually be able to go forward if he finishes the race because um, it does seem like he's got pace and the fact that he'll be one-stopping um, should play into his favour. I'll put him on fresh boots for both stints. Meanwhile, we'll use scrubs for Nakano. P16, was that a finish? No. Oh, no, it was. He finished last, three laps down, but he did finish. Uh, the Prosts seem to have much stronger race pace, actually, uh, both of them catching and overtaking Takagi and Sarazan in the Stewart. Uh, suspension failure took out our own Shinji Nakano. Uh, engine failure took out the Williams of Mika Hakkinen and the McLaren of Pedro Diniz. Hydraulic failure, um, taking out Patrick Rainbow in the Benetton and Giancarlo Fisichello in the Jordan. And Johnny Newhouse had an accident in his Ferrari. Sad times for them. Meanwhile, it's another win for the Arrows and Eddie Irvine, who's on course for uh, a very strong season. Uh, he finishes uh, about seven seconds down the road from Damon Hill's Ferrari on second. Uh, David Coulthard takes third for rounding out your podium. And then uh, it's Panis's Jordan, Esteban Tuero's Williams, and Mika Salo's Arrows picking up the last of the points. 
Uh, currently in the Drivers' Championship, Eddie Irvine uh, for Arrows and Damon Hill for Ferrari are tied on 16 points apiece. They are championship leaders, two points clear of uh, David Coulthard and four points clear of Esteban Tuero. In the Constructors, McLaren sit atop the pile at the moment, one point clear of Ferrari, who are in turn a further point clear of Arrows, all to play for at the sharp end of the grid. Williams are not far behind either. Jordan, fifth on seven points, probably not really reflective of their pace, more reflective of their reliability. Okay, let's see if anyone's talking to us. We can get a works deal over at Mobile One. That would be smashing. That would be really, really nice. Uh, can we achieve that though? I'm going to take everybody off the Castrol deal, actually. That's what I'm going to do. And we are going to try and tie that up as soon as possible because there will be competition for that deal, I suspect. Uh, any progress on the Magneti Morelli deal? It would be nice to get that tied out quickly, although I suspect it's unlikely given that we are not running. Yeah, no progress so far. We are not running hospitality, which you think is what's hurting us with uh, Mugen Honda. In terms of design, uh, some slight progress, but really nowhere near enough. Um, I'm determined to fill this top bar this year. In terms of technology, I'm waiting to see if the FIA confirm um, technology holdover year on year. And if they do, then we know the areas to focus on later in the season, because we do need to have an improvement, particularly on the reliability front. Meanwhile, uh, let's see if we can't sort this designer problem out. Right, before it was too short, then it was, it was too long, then it was too short. And I've got a feeling Let's try for two seasons. Now it's too long. Yeah, I, that's exactly what my gut was telling me. Real pain in the ass. Um, so I'm going to try him for two seasons again next round because he seems to be pivoting between them. Otherwise, uh, no new staff for us to sign, which is perfectly okay. Uh, not going to upgrade the factory just yet. That's something for next year um, because it will cost us more than we can afford does have to be done though because I would like to get a supercomputer up and running as soon as possible. No upgraded components so far. Uh, I think the engine is eventually going to become a, a big drag on the team but I don't think it should be enough to stop us winning the championship. We just have to make sure that the drivers are up to speed and we've got good race fuel and good tyres. Spent a lot of money again on spare parts. Um, we are getting more efficient on that front though. And I'm going to wipe out the damage on the cars. And in terms of where it's Nakano's turn to have his car polished up. Nice. Okay, uh, no point us holding on, I guess. There's not really much else to talk about. Let's see what's going on in the news. Um, Yeah, we let go of Celso Moriera, which is a shame. I like him. He's actually one of the better rookies in the game. Uh, he can go on to be a, a very strong driver if you're willing to put the time in. But he'd already signed for Stewart next year, which means he wasn't really a, a prospect for us. Uh, Tyrrell, uh, which is us, have signed a team sponsorship deal with Red Bull for three seasons, which we have. Eddie Irvine's very happy to have won his first Grand Prix. I suspect it won't be his last. Arrows are happy to have two cars in the top six, which we are. Hiroshi Tanan... Tanaka um, is now driving for us. McLaren have uh, signed Damon Hill. Mikasala got the fastest lap for Arrows. Um, slow starts for uh, Takagi and Nakano, but that's because we're not really uh, testing or doing anything worthwhile. The car's also awful. Pearl and HSBC are off the market. Um, Ferrari have re-signed Johnny Newhouse. And yeah, other than that, not really much to talk about. So we will press on to San Marino and see what we can achieve there, if anything. No setup points, no new components, no driver aids. 
let's get to it. 22 degrees and cloudy for your qualifying session. I kind of miss San Marino. Uh, P15 for Takagi, another strong showing for him, out qualifying both Prosts and both Stewarts. Nakano uh, again languishing down at the bottom. P20, although he is ahead of both Benettons by um, a respectable amount, uh, particularly when it comes to votes. Uh, I'm guessing that the discrepancy there is down to tyre suitability, but um, Takagi was within a tenth of Rubens Barrichello in the slowest Sauber, so that's actually encouraging. <clears throat> Up at the top, Eddie Irvine takes pole position again for Arrows on a 126.064. The discrepancy between him and Salo is actually something I was talking about earlier in the playthrough, which is um, how much more you can achieve if you're willing to spend money early on good drivers, because Eddie Irvine is out driving the Arrows, and Mika Salo is probably more representative of the car's pace in the hands of most drivers. Uh, Eddie Irvine's like a top four or top five driver in this game. And as you can see, that's making the difference. Likewise, um, the McLaren, uh, not a great car this year, but Coulthard pulling it up to second on the grid there. Uh, likewise with the Williams, Mika Hakkinen lining up third. Where's his teammate? Uh, Espantuero is in 10th. So there's a big discrepancy there between um, between the, the, the drivers. Uh, Panis leads home Fissi Keller in a Jordan 4-5, and Johnny Newhouse uh, lines up six with Mika Salo for company in the second arrows. <clears throat> 24 degrees and very dry for race day. Play the same old game. I'm hoping that the quality pace of Takagi translates into something a little more this time, but... Um, I'm guessing that will take a lot of attrition. I'm going to put fresh boots on every stint for Nakano. No, no such luck. Nakano has an engine failure. Um, we have a drive failure for uh, Toro Takagi. We also lose uh, Jean Lacy's Sauber to a driver error. Um, Mika Hakkinen's Williams to a hydraulic failure. The second Williams is also out. Esteban Tuero suffering from an accident. Uh, Ralph Schumacher's Prost also taken out by accident. Electronic failure taking out Mika Salo's arrows. Engine failure for the Minardi of Viano Trulli. Uh, and the Benetton of Alexander Wurtz. Hydraulic failure for David Coulthard's McLaren. That should mean up at the top. It's a Ferrari 1-2. Johnny Newhouse um, beats home teammate Damon Hill by a little over two tenths of a second, very close between the two Ferrari drivers. Uh, Eddie Irvine uh, stays on the podium though for arrows in a P3. Pedro Diniz, nice recovery drive for him up to P4. And uh, points for Sauber with Rubens Barrichello taking P6. In the Drivers' Championship, Damon Hill's your new leader, two points clear of Eddie Irvine. Uh, reigning champion David Coulthard, only good for third at the moment on 14 points. Uh, Johnny Newhouse and Esteban Tuero tied for P4, 12 points apiece. Ferrari uh, have displaced McLaren at the top of the constructor standings, 34 points to McLaren's 22. Arrow still in the fight on 21. Crazy times. Uh, some progress on the Magneti Morelli deal, that's pleasing. No progress yet on our fuel or tyres. A little bit of progress on the engine. I am holding out for a partnership deal though. Um, and you know, we've got time to tie that down. Uh, negotiation's still going really well on the Red Bull contract as well. We've got our first bonus. Um, it's only a small, uh, close to 200k a year increase, but you know, it all adds up. It all adds up. Uh, in terms of news, Ferrari have signed uh, Murano slash Marlborough as their team sponsor again. Uh, Johnny Newhouse took the win from Eddie Irvine on pole. Both the Tyrrells failed to finish, which we know. Uh, Johnny Newhouse definitely confirmed now um, as a Ferrari driver next year. Jordan have uh, re-signed um, Olivier Panis. Forgot his name there for a moment, even though it's written down. Uh, what else? McLaren have signed PlayStation as a sponsor. That's annoying because we wanted them. Mini Champs have signed with Williams and... Um, Benetton are in intensive negotiations with Rory Byrne. That's about it. Right, let's see if we can't get ourselves a new designer. Please sign. Osamu Goto, welcome to the team. We now have a Japanese designer. Everything's coming together. We're, we're getting a Japanese flavor. Um, 
anyone else to hire, we can hire ourselves some mechanics. That would be good news. Close to a million in the bank. That's a massive improvement. Let's see what else is going on. A bit of damage on the cars, but minor wear. We're okay with that. Shall we do another round? I think we should. Why the devil not? What's going on with next year's car? Wow. Progress is super slow. It's really slow. We're going to hold out. We are going to hold out. Um, we have to be finished with design by round 14 at the very latest. Um, if we give the remaining stages two turns apiece, uh, that takes us to round, yeah, by round eight. So we can keep the, the, design, the early design phase open till round eight, and that should make the biggest difference anyway. Um, we're not going to use reuse this year's car because it is bullshit. Let's build ourselves some spare parts, spend some of that money we've got in the bank. The cost of spare parts has come down uh, because we have better staff fabricating them. Uh, and I mean that in terms of financial cost. Um, you'll notice it dropped from 60k to 50k, which is very helpful to us. Um, let's just take the damage off, save a spare part. Nice. Okay. Nothing else for us to worry about right now, uh, aside from getting out on track again. No new tyres, no new engines, no new fuels, but and uh, that's fine. I'm still happy with the Repsol fuel. I think that was a good choice, even though we're paying for it. 22 degrees, very dry for Quali in Spain. What a surprise. P19 and P22, Takagi continuing to draw more from the car than Nakano, um, getting himself ahead of Patrick Rainbow's Benetton and Frentzen's Prost. Meanwhile, at the sharp end, uh, Mika Hakkinen leads a Williams 1-2, Esteban Tuero closing the gap to his teammate significantly there. Uh, Eddie Irvine's Arrows lines up P3, ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella's Jordan, and it's a McLaren 5-6. 24 degrees, so a slight temperature increase for the race. What's going on? My computer's making noises. Don't like it. Let's get through this race really quick, because if the game crashes, then I'm buggered. <laughs> and all this is undone. Yeah, it's a frame rate issue. Sometimes it doesn't come out on the um, on the video, so maybe you're not seeing it. But for me, it's there's like lots of lag in the mouse, and it makes it very hard to click buttons. But I can't back out now of the of the race. Okay, Nakano is just gonna have to take used tires. I don't have the patience. Wow. Uh, quite a recovery there. Toro Takagi up to P11, Shinji Nakano up to P13. Um, there was a lot of attrition there. Uh, both Jordans out, both Stewarts out, both Prosts out, um, plus the Sauber of Rubens Barrichello. Meanwhile, uh, Hakkinen goes pole to win in the Williams. Eddie Irvine getting in front of Esteban Tuero, though, to make uh, an Arrows P2. Uh, Esteban Tuero rounds out the podium for Williams, and both Ferraris make it into the points, uh, with P5 and P6 for Hill and Newhouse, respectively. Pedro Diniz takes P4 for McLaren. Uh, Eddie Irvine is your new Drivers' Championship leader, two points clear now of Damon Hill. Um, so it looks like it's going to be between those two for the foreseeable future, with uh, a ten-point gap between first and third. In the Constructors, Arrows are tied for P2 with Williams, 27 points apiece, 2 points clear of McLaren on 25, Ferrari 10 points ahead of the pack uh, out in P1, 37 points. Right, let's stop recording for a second and I will save the game. Okay, we're not going to lose anything now. Um, I am getting frame rate problems though, so uh, I'm going to close the episode out here and uh, I wish you guys an amazing weekend. Please do take care of yourselves, and uh, we will hang out again on Wednesday. Cheerio.